Hey y'all, I'm Val from Our Forever Farm. This is the first time that I've been in the kitchen making a real video. I did the fried potatoes and cornbread video, but I re really didn't show how to do it. Today we're doing something similar. We're gonna do another country meal along with many other things. So as many of you know, Sweet Hunter had surgery. It's be two weeks tomorrow. He's doing very, very good. This is also the first day that I've fixed my hair. <laughs> we have been just so lazy, haven't put makeup on for days, but being at home and just uh, taking care of him has been my, my top priority. We've rested a lot. We've not slept a lot, but things are getting better. And I just wanted to come on here and show you what I'm doing in the kitchen today. So let's get to cooking. Today. So in the crock pot, I have fresh pink eye purple hull peas. And I put them in here just so it would be cooler to cook. And I have plenty of time before we're going to eat them. A friend of mine got me that and she shelled each one. That, that means a lot to me. Then she got me squash and corn. Uh, she got us an apple pie. Uh, she, she did a lot of fun. She made her mom's special spaghetti recipe. So we were able to have that on Sunday, and it was it made life easy for me to fix this. And they came and visited, brought Sweet Hunter a sweet card for a while. Along with our girls, we had two of our girls this weekend, uh, Shannon and Alyssa. Shannon being my daughter, Alyssa being my granddaughter. They came and helped me like you wouldn't believe. The weekend before, we've had Miranda, Lane, and Huddy. You're helping me constantly. And then Mandy, our daughter Mandy, and her boys came and brought uh, lunch and stayed for a while and visited. It's been really nice to see all of them. I can't wait till somebody else comes. <laughs> but today we're going to work. So here's the squash. Here's the corn. She even cut the ends off of it so I can just slip it in the microwave if I want to. I think that's so thoughtful. And I didn't cook it right away because Sweet Hunter wasn't. He wasn't feeling real good and wasn't ready for a heavy meal, but I hope he will be today. Today, yeah. I started his morning out with a cup of coffee and an apple strudel. We split it, and it was really good. But I just went to his room and asked him if he would like something before I get started on all this. And he said, yeah, I don't want much. I don't feel too good. Just a sausage and biscuit or a bacon and biscuit. I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to start with that. And as you all can imagine, I always have, once a month, I'll do a biscuit cooking day, and I'll have biscuits in the freezer. And here he's had surgery, and I had about six frozen biscuits left. I did not even think about that uh, when he went in for surgery. So I'm just going to whip up some homemade biscuits. Now, I debated on the white lily biscuits or the two ingredient biscuits i chose the two ingredient biscuits because i did have the heavy whipping cream if you haven't saw this video and you'd like to find an easy homemade biscuit that anybody can do i'll link this in the description box it they are delicious and easy so this is one of those days that you pray that company don't come because my kitchen is going to be a mess because today is in the kitchen unless Sweet Hunter needs me. So I've made up my patties. I've got my oven preheating uh, for the biscuits. Here they are. I didn't have any that were froze. So I went ahead and just made up a batch. And now I'm going to fry this sausage. And he'll only eat one or two. But I'm going ahead and frying it up for later in the week. When he wants a sausage biscuit, then I'll have it done. I've got bacon like that too, but he specifically said sausage several times. So we're doing sausage. While my um, sausage is frying and I put the biscuits in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my squash to fry. I love fresh yellow squash straight from the garden. I like it boiled. I like it in a casserole. I like it fried. I like it grilled. I like it any way you can fix it. Now, I just made a pound of sausage, and I just made patties, but you can use like a couple of pounds and put it in a cookie sheet and spread it real thin and then cut your sausage. It makes it really easy, when, especially if you cook for a crowd. As you can see, I've got tomatoes in the background, and we're going to be doing that too. Right now, I'm just going to put cornmeal in a bowl 
and I'm gonna bread my squash while the sausage is cooking. Now, some people use flour, some people use flour and cornmeal. I use the white lily cornmeal mix. I like the white cornmeal. I think it does great. I use it for my cornbread too. So Sweet Hunter just called me. That's how we communicate in different parts of the house. And he told me he wasn't feeling well. I went down and checked on him. I said, I guess you don't want a uh, sausage and biscuit now. And he said, actually, I probably will in a little while. So, <laughs> so at least I got these going. Biscuits in the oven, sausage is done on the stove. And I was just thinking, why not just go ahead and make gravy for tomorrow? So when I get the sausage done, I'm going to make gravy in the pan, put it in the refrigerator. So tomorrow he'll have sausage, gravy, and biscuits, or bacon, whatever he wants. But I'll use this grease to make the gravy. Trying to get ahead. I'm spending the whole day in the kitchen today, except what I need to do for him. So, and I forgot to tell you, I went to the farmer's market. That's why you see all these goodies. Besides what my friend brought me, that's what she brought me. This is what she brought me. I got corn. I was going to fix her corn in the microwave because, you know, everybody shows how you can fix it in the microwave and you just slip these shucks off. But I've decided we're going to make cream corn today. And because we're going to have the purple hull peas that my friend shelled just for me, that it was so sweet. That's a lot of work. And then I'm going to fry the squash she gave me. I'm going to add some corn to what she gave me cut it off the cob and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, and then we're gonna make salsa if I get to it today. So, like I said, I went the foot to the flea market. Did I say flea market? I meant farmer's market. So I went to the farmer's market yesterday and I've got a good friend there that I, I think a lot of. She now has a page, it's called Setting, S-E-T-T-I-N, Rock Farms. I've got to know them very well. They're very good people. And we buy a lot of their apple pies. I haven't bought any in a while because I bought a bunch and put them in the freezer. But I need to stock up for the winter on that. But I ordered some green tomatoes. So one day we'll be doing green tomato pickles. And I'll show you how I do that. Well, I took that to him. He wants a tomato on it. So I'm going to put a tomato, slice of tomato on this sausage and biscuit. And I'm going to go sit on the deck with him for a few minutes, and then we'll be back to do all this cooking. Well, we enjoyed breakfast on the deck, and we went for a little walk, so that's a good thing. And now I'm just going to put this sausage in a Ziploc bag for tomorrow or the next day whenever he decides he wants some sausage. I've got that already cooked. Y'all know me, I like to do things ahead of time. But now I'm just going to make some gravy where I'll have that tomorrow. So I've got my biscuits done for tomorrow. I'm fixing to do the gravy, and then we'll get busy on everything else. So I like to uh, let my grease and my flour get to uh, cooking really good. I like my gravy to be brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and season this salt and pepper. And I'm just going to let it cook a few minutes. Now, I have a video on this. I'll link it in the description box. And this is why I love that quote saying, cooking in your kitchen is like an orchestra playing. So I like to use evaporated milk in my gravy. I always have a water in case it gets too thick. Now, at this point, I turn my eye off because it cooks up so fast, so quick. And if it gets too thick, just add some water. Now that is done and I'm gonna set it aside to cool. Now I'm just gonna get some gravy. It's not completely cool, but this bowl is fine to put something warm in. And I'm gonna put it in this bowl and put it in the refrigerator.
Now I'm going to put just a little bit of vegetable oil in to start frying our squash. Now I'm just placing this breaded squash into a pan that has hot oil in it, ready to fry it. I keep mine simple and I just season it with salt and pepper. So now we're gonna work on our corn. And my friend got me started yesterday by cutting the ends off, so that's great. And like I say, I was gonna use these just for corn on the cob, but I think I changed my mind because I'm in the kitchen today and I'm not in here every day. So I'm just gonna shuck these. Look at that, how pretty, isn't that beautiful? Now is the time to buy from the farmer's markets. If you don't have a garden or if you have a small garden like I do and you need extra, now is the time, it's going away. It's almost school time. So it's fixing to be the end. All I'm doing here is just shucking it, getting all the silks off. corn on the cob that she fixed me. I've got it all done. Now I'm going to start on this, chop the ends off, and then shuck them. Normally, I'd be shucking this outside and not in the kitchen, but I'm doing such a small amount, I think I'm just doing four ears. It works fine. the way Sweet Hunter's granny used to do it. She would fry it to get it brown on the top, and then she uh, finishes it off in the oven. So that's what we're gonna do today. So it's good and crunchy, but it's not done, but it is good and brown. I usually have my cornbread in the oven by now, but I don't have that done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. And then I'm going to make my cornbread. And y'all saw me do this a lot. So. And this is my best friend, Vicki, her mom's uh, cornbread recipe. And I will link the video to this in the description box for sure. To us, it's the best cornbread ever. So that'll be done in about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Let's get back to our corn. So if you're looking for a clean kitchen today, you're not gonna find it here till the very end. Let's cut this corn off the cob. Know. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm, it's called milking. I cut the tip ends of the corn off and then Sweet Hunter's Granny called it milking the corn. So you're getting the cream out of the corn. So I don't like silks in my corn, but I cannot find my brush anywhere. So I tried to wash it as good as I could. Now I'm just cutting the tips of the corn off. This is going to be absolutely delicious. We used to sit and cut corn on the cob off like this and freeze it, cream corn. It is so good. There's no corn like that. You can't buy it like that. So we're going to continue on with this. Get all this done and ready for our lunch. The squash is in the oven. The cornbread's in the oven. We're getting, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So here's the corn. I add a little water to it and now we're gonna cook it on the stove. We're just gonna cook it like you normally would corn that you buy. Boil it. It'll take about mm, nine or ten minutes to get it done. It's going to be good. I'm going to add some butter and salt and pepper to it. Now 
Now, one thing you don't want to do is to burn your corn. You do not want to do that, so watch it carefully. You're just going to cook it through. So our squash is done. I've got the corn starting to cook right now. And our peas have been cooking in the crock pot all morning. They're going to be delicious. The cornbread's in the oven. And, oh, I need to slice some cucumbers. Look at these, aren't they beautiful? I'm doing so many things in the kitchen. This video is longer than my normal videos. I try to make them shorter, and then I get complaints that they're short. So here, we're uh, just showing you real life, y'all. Just showing you real life. I want you to look at these two tomatoes I bought. This is from Lookout Mountain Farms. They are beautiful. I'm going to slice one of these, and I'm going to save one of these for a sandwich. Here's another big one. My goodness gracious. Yeah, I'll slice these two. Slice one to go with our meal, and one, and one I'm gonna keep out for sandwiches until I go the next time. This we're gonna make salsa out of, and we're gonna do it the easy way. So I'm washing my tomatoes really good, and I'm gonna set them out on a towel. You don't have to get them dry because we're fixing to dip them in water, but you wanna wash them really good. Just get them ready to dip in the water fast. And then I'm gonna fix this same bowl that I washed them in with ice water in it. Once I get them out of the pan that I'm boiling them in to get the peelings off, then I will put them in this big bowl of ice water to stop the cooking process. Now this part doesn't take long at all. It's just a matter of dipping your tomatoes in and peeling off the peeling. Now, so while I'm heating in my water, I am finishing up my corn. You can see it looks delicious, just delicious. And my cornbread's just about done. So we'll get it out in just a minute too. The squash is already done. I've got it sitting here. I just try to prepare everything as much as I can ahead of time. Like Sweet Hunter's not hungry now and I'm not either, but uh, we will be later on and this probably will be a meal that we have tomorrow too so anything you can prepare ahead of time i don't cook every day um, but i cook a lot when i take a day in the kitchen as i'm preparing to do the salsa this is a quick easy way if you if you want to do a quick easy way somebody sent these in the mail and thank you, I don't know who they were from. It's Mrs. Wages Salsa Mix. They also have a pasta mix that's very good. That's probably, oh, I've used the dill pickles too. I've used that too. But we're doing this today. It's going to be so easy. Uh, it's just time consuming. That's all it is. And while I'm in the kitchen, I want to get it all done where I can clean up my kitchen for a few days. And uh, I'll have food cooked and salsa made. And then I'll go back to the farmer's market again next week, hopefully, to pick up my green tomatoes. And we'll do the same thing over again with different food. I had to taste this corn. I love cream corn. Mmm, very good. My jars are in the dishwasher, if I didn't say that. So they're doing, it, doing an express wash right now. My water bath, I'm fixing it up. I have the electric water bath. And yes, it is done. I'm going to do my small tomatoes first. And you just want them to be covered with water. It doesn't take them long at all. If you have any bad spots on it like that one, you can cut it out when you, when you take your peeling off. Now I'm going to let those cook till I see the peeling. Well, they're not really cooking till I see the the peeling slipping off. When I see that, I'll know it's ready to put in the ice water. Now, if you look real close, you can see that one right there splitting. So that one's ready to come out, and probably the rest of them too. They boil maybe a minute max, maybe a minute and a half, if I was stretching it. So I see another one that the peeling is slipping off. I'm just using this, and I'm just gonna, I've got my ice water right here next to the stove, and all I'm going to do is the ones I see that the peeling is slipping off, then I'll just drop it into the ice water and that'll stop the cooking process. This doesn't take long at all. Mm 
just going to drop some more in there. I'm doing my smallest ones first just to get them out of the way. My peas are cooking good. I'm excited about those. Now I'm getting a little more ice to put in the bowl just to keep it cold because you, if you add those hot tomatoes, it's, it's going to warm the water up. So we want to keep it cool. Now this is the process that I was taught on how to get the skins off easily and the cores out. I have heard lately that you can set your whole tomatoes in the freezer overnight and that the skins peel off easily. I have not tried that. This is the only method I've done, but I want to do that one day. But this just makes it easier to core and everything and get your salsa ready. Now here are my tomatoes, and all I'm going to do is chop up the big ones because I didn't chop them as I went. It's according to how you like your salsa. We like ours kind of chunky, and it's going to cook down when you put it in the water bath anyway. So I'm just chopping them up. Now one package calls for 10 cups of tomatoes, and they say that's about 18, but I had some bigger tomatoes in here. Now you also can use canned tomatoes if you don't have any. Fresh tomatoes, canned tomatoes, I mean, as high as everything is, it's still kind of reason reasonable. Uh, I sure don't like these high prices, though, do y'all? But anyway, you can do that, too. And if I were to do that, I'd probably do that in the winter. The only reason I'm doing that this now is because fresh tomatoes won't wait till winter. So I'm just going to chop these big ones up. Now, I checked for bad places as I went, as I peeled them, and got the cores out. See, there's a big one that we sure don't want that. It won't even fit in a jar. And I don't like that white part of the core in there either. So just go through them and check them. So again, this is Mrs. Wages Salsa Mixed. Very good. I'm adding two packages. I was going to just do one, but I decided to go ahead and do both. So we're going to add one cup of distilled vinegar to this salsa mix. Now with fresh tomatoes, you had a, a lot of juice that comes when you cut them and cook them. So I try really hard to get mainly tomatoes. Now I read on the back of the package that uh, if you use canned tomatoes, you do not drain them. But I definitely would the fresh tomatoes. So here's our salsa. We're fixing to put it in the jars. There's just nothing like for salsa, whether it's canned or frozen or in the refrigerator, that you make with fresh tomatoes. My son in love, he makes a salsa for us every year. We haven't got that this year. Uh, and he makes it out of fresh tomatoes, and it's so good. But fresh just makes better, y'all. We've had a full day in the kitchen today. I'm very proud of it, but I'm very tired. Uh, I want to spend some time with Sweet Hunter. We did go on a walk. I don't know if I told y'all that. We took a break during this and went on a walk. He's doing really good. Thank you for the prayers. You just have no idea what they mean to us. Now I'm just removing the air by putting a utensil down in the jar. Sometimes it takes the liquid down a little bit and you have to add more of the salsa. But this looks pretty good here. And all you canners know, you have to wipe the tops with a wet paper towel. Some people use vinegar just to make sure we have a good seal. And now we're putting the lids on and then we're gonna add the rings and we're gonna do them finger tight. If you haven't tried canning, this is a simple one to start with. Start with Mrs. Wages Salsa Mix. It's very easy, fun to do. So this is all the salsa I had left. I've already tasted it, it's really good. I may make it a little bit stronger using two packs and didn't make as much as it said, but it's really good. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. It'll be good for Sweet Hunter a snack one day, just some chips and salsa. And I've got the, the Tostita chips in the freezer, so you can take them right out, they're just like fresh.
So let's see. I have sausage, biscuits, and gravy for in the morning. I've got fried squash, corn, cornbread, um, I start to say sugar snap peas, purple hull peas. They're my favorite peas. So I've got all that for today's dinner. I've got cucumber sliced and I'm fixing to slice a big tomato. So I'm going to put all this in the oven where it'll stay warm for a while. I'm going to clean up my kitchen. Go ahead and stick this in the oven. And then when Sweet Hunter's ready for it, it'll be ready. Now, any leftovers we have, we'll have it later on during the week. My friend that made the spaghetti, we have enough left over for another meal. Well, the canner's still going. I'm going to fix Sweet Hunter's plate. He's hungry. And um, then I'll show you the salsa when it comes out of the canner. But we're going to eat right now. That's the good thing about an electric canner. You can walk away. You don't have to babysit it. Let me dish his food out. Don't that look good? So here's his meal. I'm actually going to like taste of everything. Make sure it's good. Of course, I know those tomatoes are good. And I know that this squash is good. I've already tasted a bit. I know the cornbread's good. I've made it a million times. Corn is great. These are my favorite peas. I love them. Hope they're not too hot. I just got them out of the crock pot. Mm. This is the best thing. Oh my goodness. All I did is I took the fresh peas that my friend shelled for me and I put them in the crock pot. After I fried some bacon, threw it in, threw the grease in, salt and pepper. That's all I did. I cooked it for about five hours. Well, here we go. I'm going to take this to him. We've been in the kitchen several hours today, and my canner's still going. We've made fried squash. We've made purple hull peas. We've sliced tomatoes and cucumbers. We've shucked corn and cut it off the cob, and we've made cornbread. And then we made salsa. My goodness. I do have some other things I need to make, but that'll be for the next time. So y'all enjoy all this fresh food. Don't miss out on going to the farmer's market. These people work hard. The farmers support them. Support your local farmers. Eat their food. Buy their, buy their fresh food. There's nothing like fresh food. I'm going to take this all to Sweet Hunter, get him settled. I'm going to come back and fix me a plate. By that time, I hope the, can the canner will be done. If y'all haven't tried that Mrs. Wages salsa, it's easy to make. If you've never made salsa before, great. You don't have to have an electric water bath canner to do this. It's so simple. A pan with a rack in the bottom or a towel and just follow the instructions on the back of the package. Cover them with water and boil them. Boil the jars for 40 minutes. Make sure your jars are clean and sterilized because pressure cannon does sterilize your jars. Water bath does not. So that's the reason I did it in the dishwasher. So I'll be back. Well, y'all, we just finished the best meal. Uh, the peas were outstanding. The corn was my second favorite squash, my third. And of course, tomatoes and cucumbers. You can't beat that. Now I'm getting the salsa out of the canner. And it's ready. It finished while I was in there. Looks like it has some juice in the bottom, but that's okay. It'll settle down. You can pack the tomatoes a little bit tighter and you won't have that space at the bottom. I'm very proud of what we got done in the kitchen today. I'm proud you were along with me. Thank you for staying in the kitchen with me. Y'all go cook something.